session, so we'll have uh, a record of it, and we'll have a chance, I guess, questions during, as, as long as it doesn't get overwhelming, and if we, if the questions will be answered, just say we'll get into that, and that, we'll go through everything, so appreciate everybody's time again, and uh, just turn it over to y'all to go. Yeah, thank you for your time. Um, I'm Jason Peck, and this is Tom Freak with Daikin. <clears throat> so if you're looking at a Daikin system, that's what we'll be explaining today, hopefully for owner training. And we really want this casual, so please interrupt, raise your hand, or just interrupt us, and if you got a question, make us stop when we're talking along the way. And um, I think that'll be a good way to present. So um, again, thank you for your time, and I think what... The first, you know, we put a little agenda together. We don't want to get too deep in the woods, but we definitely want to address all the questions. Um, and, you know, initially, it says just describe, you know, basic VRV system function and operation. And I'll, I'll put it this way. I'll try to explain it um, compared to, like, a residential or your home system or what you may be used to in a condo or apartment or what you're used to growing up. Um, ideally, you know, in a traditional system, you are used to not seeing a fan coil in the space, possibly, and you're used to having a, an indoor unit somewhere located inside your house. It could be in an attic, uh, it could be in a mechanical closet, or under your house. And then that, that has a coil in it which exchanges heat for your house. So it either takes heat out or brings heat in you know, connected to a condensing unit, right? So that's ideally what we have here. Um, your indoor unit, a residential standard, is usually tied to a lot of duct work. So, you know, if you're used to a, a traditional home system, you're gonna have a set point in the thermostat. You say, hey, I like 72, 74, 68. Some people like 68 degrees. <coughs> you have a thermostat, and then um, that unit's gonna come on when it's not reaching set point to you know, satisfy your space, you're going to hear air come on, and it's, it's traveling through your, you know, through your home or condo through a you know, large amount of ductwork, usually. In this case, this is the difference. The fan cool is mostly in your spaces in this building, and I just wanted to wrap your brain around that concept that things are happen, happening much quicker than traveling through ductwork and long spaces to get your space and satisfy you know, your need for comfort in whatever setting you put on. So ideally, I want to, after, as we go through explaining a little more details of how to control it, you have control, you know, more control than just a typical standard system where every room is usually satisfied off one condensing unit. You all have more control usually in most all these rooms here, except for you know, just a few limited rooms, where you have control of your temperature with exception to limitations by UGA, and we'll go over that too. Um, you have control of your mode, heat or cool. So, no, yeah, no, uh, exactly. Well, yeah, we're, we're going to go, yeah, so <laughs> I'm glad we can bounce off each other with limitations. So, with limitations. Um, and so, just a basic concept to wrap your brain, things happen very quickly, so we want you to have a comfort level. 72 at home may not be comfort, comfortable for 72, you know, when you're here in this space. Um, so think about it. We want to find your range and help you find your range and just get you through how to control this and run your system. So that being said, any questions there? Um, maybe we dabble right into the wall controller itself and talk about the buttons on the controller. And then that's where you know Tom will interrupt me again and we'll go through, <laughs> hey, what you can and can't do. So um, let's just start clockwise there for the on-off button. So when you enter your, your space or your zone or your room, um, I want you to notice, like now, and you can't see it here, but this wall controller has a green light on it, and it's just simple. When you see a solid green light, that means your system's on. Um, if you walk in the space and you don't see a green light, that means your system's off. Can you all tell where that is on, on the actual device here? So above the tech, on, on, off, there's a little... I don't know if it's a diode kind of back uh, LED. It's just a little green inset on the actual button that says on off. Yeah, and then uh, thirdly, and, and look, I think uh, you know eventually you can have some cheat sheets um, for, for future use. 
But if you walk in and you see that green light flashing, then there may be something going on with your system. So this system has built-in self-diagnostics. So it's going to tell your UGA guys, um, it's going to tell Mark Mechanical, hey, we've got something going on somewhere in the system. may not necessarily be your, your, you know, your portion of the system, but it could be somewhere else. And it's just, it could be flashing. So um, that may be the time, you know, that you, you know, if you say, hey, I'm hot here and this controller's not working, that's when you make a phone call. But if you wait, it could be somewhere else in the building. You may be satisfied. <coughs> that's my point. Um, the only way your unit goes on and off is if you turn it on and off. Or if the DDC system that's over the top of the dike system that's right. turns it on or off, okay? So, so if yeah. you see it going off and you didn't turn it off, then that's the DDC system turning it off. The dike system won't turn won't turn you on or off. Good okay. point. And if you decide to turn it off and you forget and you walk out of the room and you leave it off, eventually there is a range set by the parameters of UGA, um, and it will eventually go out of this range of a higher low where the DDC system will turn your system back on. So it's already automatic. And that's kind of why uh, Tom got on me just a second ago saying, hey, you know, you have control of certain buttons, but eventually your DDC will override to try to keep you from getting way out of range if you forget something. That's DDC? Yes. And for, for most of us here, we don't know what DDC oh, yeah. is. It's Sorry. a fancy term that means a computer brain that's controlling everything. Right. Yeah, it's, it's your right. building management system. Okay. It stands for direct digital control. Yeah. Essentially, it's just the overall system that controls the HVAC, heat, and ventilation, air conditioning in the building. So this is just Daikin's presentation. As a reference, it's just the indoor units. It is not the outside air component, which in a lot of your spaces is that grill on the wall. Okay? Yeah. It's a different standalone system, just so you understand. Very that. good point. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I appreciate you saying that because sometimes that may be out of range and you may be blaming the diet system. So. <laughs> All right, um, so the second menu button would be the scroll in main menu there. So that's circular main menu button. Um, that's available to you, and we'll go through in the main menu in just a minute. Um, just with certain, uh, but okay, talk about, look at, the, look at the up button. It's red, the down button's blue. Um, just a funky way of saying, hey, if I'm cold, let's hit up arrow, red, let's get hot, and vice versa, right? Just that simple. So there are some um, limitations in heating and set, and heating parameters and cooling parameters for you. And do you want to go into that right now, Dan, or do you want to talk sure. about it, Tom? Um, I mean, what, what else do we need to really talk about? I mean, essentially, those are, that's kind of it. I mean, you can change your fan. Yeah, we'll go around. Well, let's, go the, uh, let's cover all the buttons and we'll go yep. into detail. But, so, but if, yes. your, if yours says master yeah. control. We're going to hit it. Okay. I promise. <laughs> I promise to get to it. Um, so exactly. anyway, there's your up and down arrows for your uh, scroll menu, okay? Um, return to previous screen here. So your next caption here uh, down in the right corner. If you happen to hit a menu or, or a button and the screen changes on you and it's different, just hit cancel and it'll always bring you back out to your main screen. Okay, so simple as that. Just all else fails, you freak out and you touch the wrong button, hit hit the cancel button, go back to your main screen. Okay. Um, again, next button is the main menu button. Um, see it down at the bottom. So once you hit menu, hit the down arrow, it'll bring up a menu screen, and we'll go in that just a second and show you. Hey, I want to change the louver direction or something. Um, again, you get in that screen and you kind of screw things up. You're like, hmm. Hit cancel, get back out. Call UJ maintenance if you you know you forget. If we offer the information of how to change your louver direction and you forget, then your maintenance guys will know how to do that. Um, let's see. Next button is the user fan speed selection that Tom brought up, and you have three, um, two or three, two or three, yeah, depending on which type of fan you. Yeah. So you'll see cassettes in this building as well, which are flush mount. These are called wall mount uh, fan coils. And do we have UQs? No, we have the one-way throws, the wall mounts, and the ceiling cassettes. Okay, so so you're welcome to change your fan speed to whatever you want to be. It does right. not affect the system, so do whatever you want with that. And if you're looking up there, uh, the little bar on the you know, the main screen, the top, or the bottom left, it looks like three bars there. That's your fan. Yeah. Um, dedicated. So whatever you're comfortable so with. You if we change our fan speed, will it stay changed? 
doesn't so fall that back to anything. Control this entire system. We've mm -hmm. eliminated the mode button. So again, when I said, hey, you have mode control, heat, or cool, I kind of fibbed on that. Tom reminded me. You, you can't job. necessarily. That's a requirement. Yeah, you can't necessarily hit the mode and go from heat to cool. In our opinion, uh, we've sold um, many, many. We have tons of installs in the state of Georgia in K through 12, higher education, hospitals, you name it. Um, eliminating that mode when you have a building management system seems to work better because what we want to do is let that system run and not have people just, oh my God, I'm hot or I'm cold and just switching back and forth. It just creates um, creates an environment where people are confused about the controller itself. So, um, and then lastly, the caption up top is just a backlight LCD display. You walk in the room and it's dark. You punch any button, it'll it'll backlight for you um, where you can see your screen. <coughs> Okay, so any questions on the face, the interface itself? Before we, I mean, I know you'll have questions, but just ideally. So the mode button yeah. is just it's disabled. It's disabled. Yeah. So the job, job requirement was the front end would control your mode. And we'll explain how, you, how that works here in a minute. And you, I mean, you can obviously push it. The little button that still exists on there, you can push it. Yeah. And it may temporarily say, oh, I need to switch modes, or I need to change this. <coughs> it might be overridden by the DDC system. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So don't don't push that expecting it to change anything, any kind of short term. I mean, any kind of long term. Yeah. Um, for the majority of things that y'all are going to try to do, up and down arrows for temperature is where you want to stay. Correct. Or fan speed. Yeah. yeah. I, I would say that those are the four buttons yeah. you'll want to push: up, down, on, off, fan speed. That's really it. I mean, you can't. Yeah. Very simple. But. Um, we have a good example. I think we're going to talk about maybe we roll right into set points, heating and cooling set points. But when we walked in this room and as y'all were filling the room up, Tom noticed that um, the set point was at, is set at 74. And at the time, the room temperature is at 75. It's going up to 76. And now it's climbing to 76. But think about it. We filled this room up. Yeah. Everybody's talking, breathing. You know, So we're, we're making the room hotter in the space. So at any point... And we'll get deeper here in just a second. But any point where you're warm right now, someone should come right over and say, hmm, it says heat on the screen, but that doesn't necessarily mean that it's heating. It was just, that's the last mode that it was in while it reached set point, okay? So, I know the big questions. Yeah. yeah. What's the heating doing right now? It's not really doing anything, right? Yeah, it so is air waiting now. It doesn't want to heat the room anymore. So it's satisfied. Waiting. It made set point, and then we filled the space up, and the temperature's climbing, correct? So there are there is a parameter where it'll kick in in cool mode on its own. Now, you can come walk over and push the what, what button to get cooler? Down. Yeah, the blue button, down button, to go to a cooler setting. And then eventually, I just want to it off, sorry. Um, it'll go into cool mode and start cooling the room down. So let me do, let me explain in the numbers yeah. real quick. So we have some parameters. All right, so you're, this is probably what you deal with every day. As you walk in, you see your screen, and you maybe don't know what this means um, to you. Set point 74, the units in heat, and room temperature sitting there, okay? So you're, you're, uh, you don't know this, you do now. If your heat set point is 74, your cool set point is exactly 2 degrees higher than that. That's the way it's, it's locked in. Whatever your heat set point is, add two to that, that's your cool set point. This unit will not change over to heat until the room gets to about 77. Oh, it's a cool. It'll, it'll, it'll yeah. change to cool. As soon as, because our cool set point is 76 right now. If you're, if you're at set point. If your heat 74 set point, your cool set point is 76. When it gets a degree above that, Dane's got a graphic to help y'all remember this. When it gets a degree above that, it'll switch modes for you. Okay? Cool. If you didn't want to touch it, if you just sat there and waited on this, this is what the BMS system is, is that's how it's controlling your system. Okay? So So what could you what could you do? You could lower your set point so to right 73. Now, let's yeah. say one degree down. Mm -hmm. Alright? Now, if your heat set point is 73. Your cool set point is 75 now, and it will change over when the room is 76. So I just bumped it down one degree. It was 74 set point. I bumped it down to 73. 
it says that it's 76 in here, and I can hear the refrigerant and the coil about to kick in. So a fan will come on in a minute. Right. Now you'll see, sometimes you'll see on the screen, it'll say standby. That means it's changing modes. And it can take five minutes, it can take 15 minutes to change from a heating coil to a cooling coil. Okay? So it's not going to happen right away. But you might see standby, that's all it means is it's changing modes. So, two things. You can sit and wait and let the building management system cool this space down, or you can walk over and you can hit the button down to, to you know, start cooling your space off or heating it up, vice versa. So what's the, in, now there are limitations by the, um, by campus that the heating set point has to be, you can only change it between 70 and 74. Those are your limits. If you try to change the heating set point to 76 degrees, it'll revert back to 74. You guys can't change your cooling set point outside the range of 72 and 76. And, and I feel like that's something that um, Dane, you know, I'm, I'm assuming y'all are gonna give those just so folks will remember, but these are the standards based on the job specifications and how, I guess it's energy management or however you, University of Georgia decides to give you those limits. So what Tom's talking about are the limits. Yeah that you can go from. You can't run the unit down to 65 and leave it, or 85 and leave it. Does that make sense? The controller right now has the word standby right here on it. So that tells us that this controller is getting ready to change over and bring on cool. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you mind if I chime that, in for a minute? Yeah, please, because right. this, this will get confusing. So please uh, answer, you know, ask questions. So I'm going to kind of start over here for yep. just a second. So uh, Dan Richards in the Office of Energy so Architects. So boom, so Tom, yeah. just popped on. Mm -hmm. That one should be coming on as well for cooling, OK? Um, I spent a bit of time trying to understand this, maybe from the, the end user's perspective. Um, these guys are person with knowledge and the manufacturer's perspective. Um, so for you guys, I mean, I'm just kind of sitting here thinking through it. How, do, how does it look? How does it react to everything else? Um, so I actually had to make a chart myself to be able to understand it. This is kind of where I'm getting at, right? Um, we talked about, let's say, 70, 72. All right, here we go. So when he says a heating set point, I'm going to make it um, up and down to correspond to the up and down arrows, hopefully. So you've got an operating parameter beyond this, which is the default. If it's in you know, uh, Christmas break when you guys aren't here, and it gets, we're going to shut the system off. What that means is it's off within parameters. It won't let it go below, let's say, 60 or 65 in the building or in any individual space. So it'll bring back up to 65 constantly, you know, overnight, everything else. We we'll want uh, pipes freezing, etc. In the summertime, same thing. If there was an outside, if you push the off button on your device in the summertime, it's going to bring it back down to 80 or 85, whatever that uh, kind of universal global range is. But beyond that. If in your space, let's say overnight, it was cold outside, and so it's you know 40 degrees outside, well obviously the space is gonna be below this uh, range, and so anytime it's below this, it's gonna be in heat mode, okay? This degree, this one degree differential, is what determines what mode it goes in. Okay, so if it's 50 degrees outside or whatever, and here it is, it's below 69 in the space, it's gonna say, oh, I'm in heat mode. Okay, so here we are in heat mode. Then it's what it's going to try and do is heat the, the space back up to 70. And then it's going to hang out there. It's cold outside, it's going to cool down again and say, oh, nope, need to be 70. Heat it back up. Oh, need to be 70. Well, eventually, it's going to be 8 o'clock in the morning, 9 o'clock in the morning, you guys get in here and everything. And, and then y'all are going to be in the space. And when you're in the space, guess what happens? It's going to start heating up again. It's going to heat up again. It's going to heat up again. And throughout the day, the sun comes up, uh, maybe you've got some students come and you advise them, or uh, whatever happens in your space, more and more heat's going to be acted, uh, acted upon in your space with the computer running, and eventually it's going to get above 72, right? Well, what does your display show right now? It's still in heat mode, 
So it is going to show a set point of 70. This is the confusing part to me. From, from, we'll switch to cool, move that standby condition, and it'll display what is the cooling set point. So previously, what was it showing? It was showing a set point of 70. Now it's showing a set point of 72, which is actually a good thing for you if you want to be colder, because then it's going to say, oh, I need to drive it back down to 72. But the visual feedback to you is that your set point went up. That's incredibly confusing to me as an end user, but it's just, it's an amalgamation of the way that their system is set up, trying to mesh with UJ's campus standard of operating, okay? It's, it's a little bit of a nuance, but if you understand this, I don't think it's a problem, right? And all this, I, I can write this same thing for every individual set point, but just know, like Chuck and I said, if you're hot, push the blue down button. If you're cold, hit the blue, hit the red up button. And that's really all you need, or hit the off button if you really need to. That's all you need to know from a functional standpoint, but this is why the feedback mechanism on the device is different than what you would expect. In the summertime, I don't think we're going to have this problem. Because in the summertime, this increase is always happening. We're not changing from a mode. In the summertime, I think it's always going to be in cool mode, and you're going to be happy, and it's going to work fine. In the wintertime, because we're adding heat to the space simply by occupying it, and overnight it had switched, it, it, it's confusing. Or a um, swing on. You know, it could swing be a spring or fall. Yeah. Yeah. So that explains, if I can just point oh, yeah. out, like some people have been experiencing, they're sitting there, it's 3, 3.30 in the afternoon, right. and all of a sudden, wow, they got cold air blowing right on them. That's another louver thing, which is important enough. Right. Um, so that's pretty much what we're experiencing. Right. Um, so, so just know that, too, is if, if inherently, if you see heat mode, and your set point is, let's say you're in heat mode, and your set point is 73, right? Then, um, you know, this is early elementary math. You add two to that, right? And that is your cooling set point. So when it, when it switches over to cooling, it actually didn't increase. It just now displays the cooling set point. It just doesn't show you both at the same time. So there's a two degree differential here. I'm going to say delta two, right? And then above that, at 76 is your changeover, and at 72 is your changeover. Okay, so this is, when it gets above 76, it's going to be in cooling. When it's below 72, it's going to be in heating. But these are the temperatures it's trying to maintain. A two degree differential, the whole band is four. And that, that's what the campus standard is based on. And our room temperature should be accurate. Yes, yeah, so these will be calibrated. Yeah, about 95% oh, of them have been calibrated. Yeah, okay. by right. Because I knew there was a problem in the past. There, there was there in setup. Yeah. So, yeah, to get you guys updated on that. So I think it was at the end of November or maybe middle of December time frame, we went through almost yeah. every one. There's a couple maybe IT closets or something we couldn't yeah. get into. But basically all of them were recalibrated and most of them uh, were well, uh, reading above what the actual mm -hmm. space condition was. So, so maybe... 500 questions here, but that, that help? gets into some weeds, but it could help you. Um, but three things to remember. Hot, turn it down. Cold, turn it off. And if you're satisfied and, you know, and it could be running or you're saying, hey, I don't like filling the air, go turn it off. And you're satisfied, right? And then when you get unsatisfied, go turn it back on. So just that simple. I'm um, just the understanding that the errors you're pushing are only going to change it within the UGA set right. That's correct. Now that's out of all that, that's what you're getting. And it all, it, it, these two are tied together, but it'll only display a change. <coughs> right? So just like we're talking about, if it's in heat mode, let's say uh, you're hot, so you decide to push this down. It's going to move that 73 and the 75 down. So you push it once, it's going to be 72, 74. Push it again, it's going to be 70. Seventy-two, right? Whatever. whatever. <laughs> <laughs> That's a brain. But basically, tied together by a differential of two. That right. makes sense. And, and go back to that cool. You know, and not. It's not necessarily in cool mode. If you've walked in or you sat down, you started your day. That it probably could have been in cool mode. It's last mode just to meet set point. Doesn't mean it's cooling if you walk in and you're cold, correct? Now it could be, but it may be trying to. It could have been hotter in the room when you walked in. So whatever it may be. But, Can I ask oh, yeah. a specific question? So. Um, I, I supervise the testing office down here, so I have a lot of people in oh, one yeah. room. 
You pointed this way. Which room is it? Oh, it's uh, uh, right now. I'm talking about the office, which is 205. Check with um, that now. And then um, it's also the testing rooms themselves. We have six students testing in um, 207 and 208. Um, so in the testing office, what's been happening is uh, the fan blows. We turn it off, and within five minutes, it turns back on. The fan itself. The fan. And you, you push fan off, and then you hit off on the thing, or just the fan. We we just hit off. The whole thing off. Off. The whole, whole thing off. Yeah, you can't turn but, the fan off. Go ahead. But it's been. Well, um, it, off. it pops back on within five minutes, and it's driving my staff crazy because it's just like. So are you satisfied in the space? Is what we're you're saying? Satisfied with and the you space, hit off. And we hit off, and then. So we're being overridden. Somewhere, yeah, potentially. Yep. It just turns itself back on within five minutes. I got you. So they just spent the whole day fighting with it. Just yeah. Back. And which ones is that again? Uh, two of five. So the yellow one up top. Yeah. And then two oh seven and two eight as well, right? Two oh seven and two eight. We're having issues just because it's been so. It's we're having trouble getting the system to, to turn itself on. But maybe with some of this, I can troubleshoot. Sure. Um, oh yeah. It's just when you, when you have six students testing in there between yeah. eight a.m. and eight p.m. It gets kind of stale and swampy, yeah. and I've had students start to feel claustrophobic because of the lack of air, air flow. So, and you're basing that on airflow or no airflow? No airflow. Yeah, perfect. Those so you need it on. Yes, on. yes, but it hasn't. I've been turning on, but hopefully I'm trying to okay. push it a little bit. Okay. Yeah. No. Are those are those on a um, are those connected to career center rooms since they're purple? No. Mm -hmm. So, two o five. Is its own. Right, but what about 207 and 208? Yeah, this, they're each individual okay. as well. Okay. Perfect. Yeah. Don't want really either. <clears throat> yeah, more questions, please, um, on this. What room are you in? Do you remember? 128. Can we find one? Yeah, so do you want to jump into that already? Yes, we should. Talk about master control. Well, voting control. So it shouldn't be on the master anymore. We, we've right. changed that. Right? Well, it is. It says I got up this morning. It says it? Yeah. It, it still says it. master, but it's, it's, yeah, that's, that's not right. how it's operating. You know, it says, but let's, which room are you? 128. Here? Right this is you? I guess so. All right. <laughs> <laughs> this is the way the project was designed. These five rooms vote on what mode they want to be in. <clears throat> Okay. It's the way it's designed. Not our, not our doing. Majority vote. Yeah. So anyways, if three of the five need cooling, then everybody gets cooling. If three of the five need heating, then everybody gets heating. So, so you, you won't be able to necessarily control your mode if, you, if you're yeah. in this group here. So who controls it? The is it the one? Is it one thirty? Literally, like you raise your hand, raise your hand and say, "I want cooling," and if three of the three people want cooling. And they get it. And three people say, I want heating. And it, it's, it's not tied to any individual room. It's tied to the BMS system. It, it used to be a, a, the or first really three, nice. four months of occupancy. Yeah. It was a master control, meaning that one control controlled the mode. But we uh, met with kind of leadership here in the building and said, hey, we don't think that's probably the way it needs to go. Let's say Bob leaves for the weekend. And he left it in heat mode. Right? He has control. Man, I'm, I'm, I'm hot, you know? So it made it to, to a voting method. And so that's what it should be operating at underneath now. But, you know, um, so typically across campus, the most common system we have is a VAV system, not a VRF system. And you can have five or six offices, even some of the legacy buildings. I mean, we just got out of a building right now where we're looking at renovating it, and there's 30 offices that are on the same zone. Right? So that means that those 30 offices are either going to be in heating mode, or in cool cooling mode. The good thing about this is even if, let's say, you're all in heating mode, if you don't want heat at the time, your device and your space will just be not running. You'll have to, you, yeah, exactly. I so wouldn't suggest turning it off, because then your vote goes away. So leave it on, it'll do like these were doing. They basically went down to very minimum fan speed, theoretically off, waiting for the other rooms to call for low change. So I wouldn't turn it off in that case. This is not a polling. This is, yeah, that's kind of a dumb clarification. Yeah. Voting meaning 
what you have in your set. Your control. No, we're not going to have to get together and all. Yeah, that's right. Okay. Yeah, it's just automatic. for everybody. And also, the thermostat also doesn't have an option where you can hit heat or cool, right? It's just it's, it's based, based, on, based on, on the numbers. Yeah, it's based on those numbers based on that. And each of your rooms, you can do your own numbers wherever you want to. You can run it where you want to run it. But based on those conditions of one goes into an IT closet, we'd have a problem. Or you right. come in and plug no. a heater in. Not that. Right. 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 Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So, can the fan mode be overridden? Or like if you turn the system off, but then the fan comes back on? Because I know like when we're in your office, Brad, like if we're meeting, yeah, but the fan is on full blast. So which one is yours? You mentioned earlier. Do you have a, a wall mount or a cassette? You I have. This wall mount? Okay. Yeah. And we turned it off. Like, I got up and turned it off because it was blowing, like, freezing air on me. And then, like, two minutes later, it just, like, started, and, like, papers are, like, flying. <laughs> <laughs> Because I know at one point he was talking about, hey, it's running an auto. Uh -huh. So I think it may be. Yeah. yeah. So we'll, we'll do okay. that. Okay. What room is that? Uh, you don't have to remember the number. Where are you? I don't even know. It's probably like one across from the front desk. I'm able to file. No, he's. I, I remember that you're you're our group with some other. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Sure. Yeah. I'm probably on that side. You're 113. You're over there. 113. 113. Okay. So it's. Like I was in an office yesterday that, that she's hot all the time. The front desk, she thought she was on the front desk control. They're cold all the time. So she has a fan, another fan in her room. Is that messing things up? A fan by itself? So, yeah. yeah. No. 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 But all that's going to do is move air. It'll let it off this much heat. In in there. There. Yeah, if you plug a heater in. So how much yeah. do they fight? Because like what she's talking about, like, she has two fans going on in her space, and we have one heater going on in our space. Oh, you did? Yeah, I turned the plug in here. I, I plugged the heater in and it's cut off the electricity. <laughs> no. <laughs> Amber yes. Those are taboo. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I'll, I'll let you know that uh, Environmental Safety Division, which is over the fire marshal group, would not want to hear that. Uh, yeah, I don't want to touch it. Sorry. No one heard that. Um, so, but do they fight with each other? Like, yeah, at that so point, if you have a heater in the space, cold, you're cold, adding heat. Right. So you're, you're, yeah. you're either not voting or you're voting. <laughs> <laughs> well, also, that heater, you're yeah. If you're not, if you didn't push the off button on yours, mm -hmm. what you're going to be doing is you're adding heat to the space, and so eventually you're going to rise above that set point, and it's going to say, "Hey, I want cooling." cooling, 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 cooling. cooling. Okay. So it's going to try and cool you down, even though you've added heat. So then, you heard two fans do the same thing? No, okay. fans just move air. It just moves air, and it's nothing tied. It has no heater tied to it or air conditioning, right? Just okay. moving air. But if your if your fan keeps kicking back on after you turn it off, that heater's probably causing that room that thermostat to say, "I need cooling in the space." Is that heater maybe directly causing the controller okay. because of the set points? Yeah, okay. it's probably driving it back on <clears throat> immediately. Okay. Um, if you're cold, then keep your Push controller up, up, up as far as you can run it until you find a comfort level. That you feel it's comfortable yeah. and just leave it there and That's see what, what happens. That's what we've been doing, and yeah. it just always blows cold air, whether it's on the heat mode or the cool mode, which is why we got the bad yeah. heater. Does <laughs> is it, is it, is this system work you like a um, uh, what is it called? The heat pump, sort of? This is a heat pump. Thing it's for, yeah. Yeah. It is yeah. reverse cycle. Yeah. So, yeah, it's not going to, I mean, it feels like it's cool air, but it's just moving the air, right? So it, it should be um, adding heat to the space. Yeah. It, it's actually doing it in the space. The coils are in that device there. It's not remote like it's not in your house. So it's going to react very quickly. Again, kind of, I tried to visualize that at the beginning of our description of yeah. what you're used to maybe at home or in an apartment or mm -hmm. condo. Which room are you in? It's the front. It's the front desk. Reception room. Uh, yeah. Yeah. First yeah. floor? Yeah. Uh -huh. Uh, what is it, 119? Um, I want to show you possibly how to change your louver setting yeah. uh, eventually. Yeah. Uh, it's really easy. This can blow above your head. You may not ever feel the air and then let it yeah. satisfy at okay. a certain set point. Same and see how that works. Same set point. Okay. And then it's mine will switch back to you know, the mode it was. It, it has a mind of its own. You mean the, you mean the louver? Yeah, yeah. It doesn't yeah, have yeah. Um, louver. The louver wouldn't. Well, here, let me just go ahead and show you what happens. It's, yeah, it's really simple. It's, so, yeah, we'll yeah, tell you how to do it, and then I think um, UGA planets may can come around, or we can come around and show you how to do it. 
a couple presses. So really, you just want to go to your menu button, mm -hmm. and then immediately, uh, you can't see it. First choice first is choice, airflow direction. Yeah, airflow direction. Yeah. So you hit the center button again, and it shows you a display, a range, of how these louvers. So you have an oscillating, where it will oscillate the whole time. It's called swing. Swing, yeah, swing mode. Or I'm going to push a down arrow. You can push an up arrow if you'd like. And watch this. Well, you haven't selected it yet. Yeah, I selected it. It's turning, changing to, to, to go set to blow above your head, and then I hit OK there. So now it's blowing up here. Um, there's another range. I'll go from here, and then it'll go down to another setting somewhere along this angle. See, it's already moved. That one's moving as well. They're both tied to this controller. And then I'll change it again and drive it down to a floor setting. So if you'll if you can see it, it'll drive on down and angle towards the floor. And you just hit OK whatever airflow direction you want. Or if you want it to oscillate, you can go back to the top of, once you see this visually, it'll show you. And then the graphics will show right here on your yeah. controller. And that's what I'm looking at, so it's showing me. So I'm going to leave it at the floor you pick. for now. So theoretically, that shouldn't change on its own. Not supposed to be anything okay. that. Yeah, there's no way. Do they close do. if the unit was off? Some models do. I don't think these models. I haven't seen them. I think I've seen them. What about the mode that they oscillate during that? We have to reset that every day. No, it's what you've left it on. Okay. So, guys, if that is changing for you for some reason, just put fill that up in the survey. Video it. I want to see it. <laughs> <laughs> if, if, um, User error. User yeah. Send it to me. Send it to me. <laughs> if it is happening today, for real, um, <laughs> fill out that survey. And I don't, if that's the only thing that's bothering you in that instance, you don't have to fill out the temperatures and all that kind of stuff. Just put in the notes that that's what's happening. Yeah. Say, hey, this is what was before. This is where I said it. It's tomorrow. Yeah. For some reason, it's changed. Like if I was sitting on the, yeah, yeah, definitely fill yeah. out the room number. I can, I can, I can see what you're saying. So if I were sitting right here, and that's the oh, yeah. angle, it does. and um, even though I like cold air, you know, eventually I'm going to get bothered by it. So I would get that above my head, you know, just where it doesn't even bother you, even if it's on in heat or cool mode. Right. And going back to what's within the end user's control, the fan mode. This is a stupid question. It's just control the speed at how quickly or slowly it's going to cool or heat. Well, that, that's fan speed. Speed. That's what I'm asking. Yeah. And so that's not directly tied. I mean, in our minds it is, but it's not directly tied to how well it can condition the space. It really only directly controls the speed of the fan. Okay? So don't think about that in terms of its ability to heat or condition cool up the space. Faster. Okay, so if, right. it, if two of the, say we're on the voting system, two of the three rooms have it on high fan, would it be reaching that set point quicker uh, to where? So the, 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 the temperature conditioning is yeah. is based on fan speed to a degree, but it's mostly based on the refrigerant so, flow. Yeah. So remember, your, your temperature is reading at the wall, not necessarily what you feel, correct? I mean, if it's blowing on you directly, yeah, you're going to feel it immediately. Um, yeah. But it's it's still trying to maintain from over here somewhere, right? Wherever this controller is, that's where it's reading temperature. So the fan may be blowing cold or hot air directly on you, and you're already warmer, colder, faster than that controller feels it. If that makes sense. That answers kind of, my question. Yeah. So I guess I'm not wording it right, but the fan yeah. speed at the different units is not affecting the vote or the custom oh, volume. Oh, no, not at all. Now, the only thing that it would do is it might move the air around the, the room faster so that it might register that satisfaction at the, the, the device more readily. Right? Yeah. So if you've got temperature stratification yeah. in the space, it may move the air around a little bit more to mix it faster. But Ideally, these systems are, are, are built technology-wise to be quiet and not to have, uh, you, know, a, you know, an astronomic forced air upon like you hear at your house, you hear the lights flicker and something comes on that you're, you know, or some of these buildings are used to when you can't even talk and a, a, you know, a package unit or something comes on and it's loud and you have to get the speakerphone out. It's, it's, you know, it's designed to flow and you can change your airflow directions and a little bit of speed uh, control, but it's all happening very quickly at a coil inside your space or zone, right? Not somewhere else in the building and then eventually getting to you and then turns off, turns on. So we want to help you find that comfort range and the airflow range where it's you don't have to plug a heater in or whatever. We really need
to go into the menu button is Uber direction. Yep. yep. And there's fan speed. Yeah, I mean, I'll the go through. It's right on the face. Oh, okay. I'll okay. tell you what it is. You know, there's one, two, three, four, five, six different yeah. main menu settings. Mm -hmm. um, you know, configuration, maintenance information that the guys at UGA would like to go into. Change it to Celsius if you want to screw up somebody's day. Um, off timer. None of that, you know. So if you get in there and you start screwing with the buttons, just hit cancel to get back out if you think you messed up. Really airflow direction. There's not language changes there, you know, when your buddy decides oh, yeah. to change it. Well, German I'm sure there is on YouTube. <laughs> I'll announce it. <laughs> I've done that. Yeah, so. Um, that's really just the simple buttons around that menu button is really what you need to fool with. Once you get your airflow changed the way you want it. Okay. And, um, um, just to clarify, going back to that, this is a dumb question. So with the main controls, that's not a thing. Like the, the rooms that were like main no. master, master controls, master controls, that's not. That should not be a thing. Okay. Anymore. Even though I'm saying that. Even though it says it. Right, there might be a legacy <laughs> term that's on the device. Yeah. That shouldn't be. And to clarify Sorry. one thing, if you go to those five rooms and they all, what they say on the screen is not what they're voting for. You have to, you got to understand that you're three degrees above sub point, so you're, you might be calling for cooling, but you're still going still gonna to say heat until, okay, I didn't want anybody to walk around and just look at those. It took about, um, I was counting down when it was starting to get hot here and we were two degrees above set point and still said heat on there and it started making me nervous. I was like, oh. <laughs> but it took, um, you know, a little over a minute. I could hear it myself. You probably wouldn't hear that, but we could hear the refrigerant, you know, coming this way. But it took about a little over a minute to finally change the, the actual heat language there to cool. And it's already. Yeah, then it took a few more minutes after that before yeah, it stopped right. blowing. That core was hot. It stopped, they had to right. stop blowing the warm air. Obviously, it was in heat. So, um, and there is a transition blowing. time because of yeah. its refrigerant based system. Mm -hmm. How often does the system pull the motors? Oh, good question. Mm -hmm. Got me there. I'll find out. Thank you. Yep. Not actually. Someone's told me that. How do you know? <laughs>
That's too confusing. I was going to say, yeah. 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 yeah, let's not go there. <laughs> it's bugs. Now, somebody had a question about hallways or something. Was that you? What's a hall? Yeah, what's in the hallway? You were saying something oh, about no, your, your entire hall. Yeah, Is that yeah, what yeah. You my row of rooms. Yeah. yeah. Rover. So it's just those. You're, and you, you said you were right here, right? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so it's those. Find ones across the hall. Oh, you got uh, eight. <coughs> I do. She's, she's, trying, she's eight. trying to put hers on. Eight. I think one's on five. Oh. Yeah. Yes. I shouldn't be talking about people. Any other questions? Okay. Um, we've kind of been filtering through a couple different individuals. Chuck's the project manager uh, from the University of Georgia. These other representatives are here from the maintenance shops and obviously the mechanical contractor that installed the equipment and manufacture. We'll stick around for a couple more minutes if you guys have any specific questions. But thank you for your time. Thank you. Thank you.